Our nation was a mess in so many ways before 2014. It is only now that we are getting better. If you don't agree with me, please be with me for a few minutes. I'll prove it to you with mind-blowing facts. Do you know that the BJP government cancelled 20,000 NGOs licenses after coming to power? An NGO is something that does good for the society, right? But why would a government cancel licenses of NGOs? There are many NGOs which are doing commendable jobs and even the government is encouraging several of them. That's a different matter. But 20,000 NGOs are fired now. Why? What was happening in the country before 2014? What kind of people were in power? Here in this country, we even have NGOs which were run by the leaders of the ruling national party. It also included cabinet ministers. Not only them, the prime minister himself was associated with it. I'm talking about the RGF, Rajiv Gandhi Foundation. It was established on 21st June 1991. And the foundation works on noble causes of issues including literacy, health, disability, etc. etc. But recently, it is in the news because it has received funds not only from the Chinese embassy but the Communist Party of China as well. But this is not the full story. There is so much vital info about RGF that can unravel many things and it can even put the ex-Prime Minister behind bars. Manmohan Singh is always projected as a saintly person, as if he is a pure soul in the midst of all corrupt people. The image of Manmohan Singh created in the media, even in the movie, The Accidental Prime Minister, is a big fat lie. I know it's a big allegation and I might land up in trouble because of this. Those who question the exploitation and bring out facts to people are always in trouble. But I'm not someone who get entertained by the stupid movies that you made. I want to shatter this game of deception created by these masters of corruption. The story revolves around three financial years. According to some people, the then newly appointed Prime Minister is the greatest economist which India ever had and the best Prime Minister too. For what? For facilitating an organized system of loot and corruption. Do you know that currently our ex-Prime Minister Manmohan Singh is a trustee of RGF? The same Rajiv Gandhi Foundation's annual report for 2007-8 to shows that these ministers donated to RGF. Similar transfers happened every year till they were in power. You can check the donor list of RGF yourself but my question is why would a central administrative ministry donate to a private trust? Who transferred the money to the trust? When you have a whole government machinery at your disposal, why would someone donate crores of rupees to a private NGO? Then what's the point of government? Is it to serve people or grab money from people and run a private NGO? Remember, Manmohan Singh, the Prime Minister himself, did nothing but a serial insult of the democratic process by being a trustee of the RGF. And you know who is running the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation? Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, Manmohan Singh and Chidambaram are listed as trustees. On 28th March 2020, Prime Minister Modi inaugurated PMKs to collect voluntary funds for COVID relief. On 7th April 2020, Sonia Gandhi in her letter to PM Modi demanded that the funds collected under the PMK's initiative should be transferred to already existing PM and RF to ensure efficiency, transparency, accountability and all other things which Congress itself has no clue of. You may ask what's a big deal about a fund? After all, these are some pity donations. You wouldn't say that if you know how much money PMK's received in one week after its inception. 6,500 crores. And mind you, this is three times more than what PMNRF got in two years. Why does Sonia Gandhi have to talk about PMNRF during the times of pandemic? She is so concerned that PMKs was created even though we had PMNRF. Why? Because during their role, the PMNRF was at their disposal to transfer funds into their own dubious NGO RGF, which is now under interministerial inquiry. The reports of 2005, 6, 6, 7 and 7, 8 clearly shows about the funds transfer from PMNRF to RGF. The most disgraceful thing is that not only the taxes paid by the public are transferred to some third party private NGO, but the money you donated out of your compassion for relief work is also given out to the same NGO. PMNRF was constituted by Jawaharlal Nehru. However, what is little known is that when it was constituted, the managing committee had specifically included the president of the Congress party. Ever since PMNRF was deemed a trust, it has functioned without a trust deed. In fact, in the year 1985, the then managing committee of the fund entrusted the entire management of the said fund to the Prime Minister, giving unbridled power to the Prime Minister with zero accountability. Till date, nobody knows what the guidelines that govern the PMNRF are. 
All this happened during Rajiv Gandhi's tenure. PM Cares, on the other hand, is far more democratic as the committee consists of three cabinet ministers, the Home Minister, the Defence Minister and the Finance Minister, while the Prime Minister chairs the trust. What this means is PM Cares reduces the power of the Prime Minister in the trust. Why would the Prime Minister himself reduce his own powers? Because of the same transparency. Some witless people made fatuous claims and trolled this initiative by Indian government in defense of the PMNR without fact checking. Now let me make it very clear, no Prime Minister can transfer funds to any NGO on his will. The PM Cares is far more transparent than the PMNRF. On the other hand, Manmohan Singh allowed the transfer of funds being the Prime Minister. Of course, there appears to be no restrictions put under the law on a trust for receiving donations. Therefore, even RGF could receive donations from anyone, including the government or various departments, ministers or for that matter the PMNRF. It is this loophole in the system that they have used to transfer funds from the government or its various ministries to RGF. PM Manmohan Singh, the greatest economist, seems to have done a commendable job in looting the money and hiding the fact that it's a clear case of conflict of interest. Namaste Madam Ji, as per your request, I found a new loophole in the system through which we can safely transfer all the funds to our RGF. We not only escape the taxes, but we can also do some Samaj Seva. <laughs> Nobody ever heard of RGF except when it is exposed for its corruption. Do remember, Manmohan Singh is both an office bearer of PM and at the same time he is the trustee of the NGO to which the funds are being transferred. Article 1021A of the constitution bars the member of the parliament from holding an office that would give its occupant the opportunity to gain financial advantage of benefit. On the principles of propriety and upholding the morality of a constitutional office as that of the Prime Minister of India, it would definitely amount to conflict of interest. Now let's look into the same financial years once again. As you might have seen in the news, the Chinese embassy and the government donated huge amounts to Rajiv Gandhi Foundation. As soon as they got the funding from China, Rahul Gandhi and congressmen signed a MOU with the Communist Party. Once the MOU was signed, in 2010, Rajiv Gandhi Foundation started endorsing the free trade with China. Allegedly, this was done to initiate the RCEP deal in 2011. But what is RCEP? And how does it affect us? An RCEP is an agreement between the ASEAN members and its FTA partners. The agreement was made such that India was getting swamped by the imports. As soon as we signed the deal, imports increased exponentially. It affected India very badly. India's trade deficit with the RCEP nations is $105 billion, of which China alone accounts for $54 billion. The main worry is over China manufactured goods and dairy products from New Zealand. These products flooded the Indian markets and the domestic companies were dying. The Congress government signed such an evil deal which started choking our domestic businesses. Why didn't Manmohan Singh stop them? How can the best economist Manmohan Singh do something like this? And it's very evident that who benefited from it. This is the same Congress and the same Rahul Gandhi who did not utter a word against China during the Galvan Valley standoff. But they have given a dozen statements against Indian government. Interestingly, the initial deadline was 2016. But then Union Minister Anand Sharma signed the deal in 2011. There were many concerns raised by senior bureaucrats, but still he went for the deal. But finally, in 2019, India took the brave decision and opted out of the RCEP deal because the demands made by India weren't included in the agreement. This gave immense confidence to the Indian manufacturers and companies. India's refusal was a big blow to China, both in terms of image and moreover to its future strategy to tackle the trade war. Further, the annual report of the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation for the year 2018-19 had disclosed that it had also received funds from Bharati Foundation. The Bharati Foundation was one of the partners with Chinese telecom giant Huawei, recognized widely as an extended arm of the Chinese state. What are those unknown reasons apart from funds to RGF? Are there any elements of personal interest? You better search for the truth. You don't say all this on the major media outlets as many of them are part of this lobby. Over the years, the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation has also received donations from the governments of Ireland, Luxembourg and the European Union as well. Did they do it without any benefit for them? If you're still reluctant to take off the image of innocent Manmohan Singh from your mind, I'll give you one more reason. 
In 1991, when Manmohan Singh was finance minister, he tried to allocate 100 crores to Rajiv Gandhi Foundation in the union budget. Not just 100 crores, Manmohan Singh kept aside 250 crores if further needed. 350 crores in 1991 to an NGO whose age is less than a year. It clearly shows where the loyalty of Manmohan Singh lies. The nation or the party? Or why would we call him loyal to somebody else when he himself was a part of the game? Why Manmohan Singh is portrayed as if he is a child with no choice? If you forget, I'll remind you there is a total of four lakh eighty-two thousand crore rupees of scams during his tenure as a. <sighs> And it's your money, our money that we have worked our blood out for generations. People have committed suicides due to this. Do you understand why farmers commit suicides? Do you understand why people suffer unemployment? Look at the amount of money being looted during the tenure of the greatest economist, Prime Minister. The most horrible thing is they have successfully managed to create an illusion to the public. Look at Manmohan Singh, how innocent he is. He is not capable of doing this. Of course, you can't ask Sonia Gandhi because she is not the office bearer. Now you don't know whom to blame. You don't know whom to ask. You don't know who is responsible for the suicides and unemployment. This is all they wanted. You being directionless is what they want. All those people whom you see to be portrayed as pious and saintly might have an angle that can send chills down your spine. There are some idiots who brush off all this as conspiracy theories. I'll tell you one more conspiracy theory then. Do you also know about Manmohan Singh's daughter Amrit Singh? Do you know that she works for George Soros? Are there any links between RGF and George Soros? Are there more links involved in this? String reveals all this in the coming episode.